everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Fiddle. I am an artist, a crafter, and a miniaturist that likes to teach others that they can be creative too. Link to scavenger hunt, patterns, and materials is listed in the description box below. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. It really helps me out a lot with YouTube's algorithm. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Today we are making this cute little rocking chair bench. This is piece number three for you guys and number four for me. And it is also the last piece in our interchangeable set. The next piece is going to be a changing table, but we won't need the bassinet piece for it. I made a much simpler one about two years ago, and I thought it would be a good idea for the interchangeable set. To get started on this project, the first thing I decided to do was cut my rocking legs or rocker arms I'm not sure what these things right here are considered rocker feet that's what they are the rocker feet <laughs> anyways I used the pattern from my rocking horse tutorial to trace out the rocker feet sand them and set them aside we'll come back to them way later the next thing we're going to do is grab our chopsticks and using the not pointy end or the end where they're attached to each other, we are going to cut four legs. I made mine two inches long, but quite honestly, I should have only made them an inch long. Then I used my cutter as a guide and cut angles on the corners of four pieces, two being two inches and two being five inches they're going to make up the framework for the seat. I think my pieces always end up on the larger size of what they're supposed to be. I think five inches is rather large, but when the bassinet's three inches and my doll is almost two inches, there's not very much room to play with in those perimeters. For the next part, I used a food container plastic lid because it's see-through and I can use the guidelines on my mat to make sure I stay square and it don't stick to anything. Set it aside to dry and we're going to move on to making the back of the chair. Now for this, we're only doing the portion where the doll is sitting, not where the bassinet is. For this framework, I went about two inches in height and two inches wide. Don't mind the curls, it was humid that day. My hair does what it wants, I'm just attached to it. I also added a dividing piece on the seat where the edge of the chair portion would be. It's going to act like an anchor for our glue line. And then I put the back of the chair to the base. For the armrest support, I cut a one inch piece of chopstick and glued it over the intersecting corner piece. The armrest, I cut the back end of a chopstick about two inches long and glued it in place. Then I cut two tiny, oh, one fourth inch pieces to glue on the other two corners. I considered leaving the other armrest off. I think that would have looked cute too, but I was going to put beads as railing slats. I ended up changing my mind after getting it almost finished. Next, you're going to need your rocker feet and your legs, whichever you cut them one or two inches. Now, you need to cut the part that's going to be attached to the rocker leg at an angle. You may have to do some sanding and filler, but that's okay. When you go to glue your legs to your rockers, before you even touch the glue bottle, stack them on top of each other. Make sure they are exactly even and lay them on your mat so you can see where your two inch, well, okay, I mine was two inches, yours is going to be whatever you make it, but your two inch marks and mark them on both sides. This will make sure that you're putting your rocker arms in the right place. Okay, now you can glue it together. I had to go back and find that footage because I didn't have it and I knew I needed it because it's kind of important. If these aren't right, then your whole rockin' may not rock. Set them aside to dry. We'll glue them later after we've got the rest of the chair figured out. Next, you'll need some glue and water mix and a paintbrush. Then cut out and measure a strip of ribbon that is long enough to go from end to end of our bench. Then give it a light wash of the watered down glue. This will make sure that the fibers stay together. Once it's had time to dry, you can go ahead and glue it to the bottom of the seat. And you might have to straighten the wire along each side as you go. When you have it laid in place, let it dry for a few minutes. While I was gluing the seat down, 
I realized I wanted to have the upper part of the chair curved, so I used my glue bottle as a guide and used my cutter to cut it off. And don't forget to sand. Now we can add the back fabric. I went vertical instead of horizontal with it. I went into the clean edges on both sides of the chair, but it really didn't matter either way because I ended up wrapping it with braided twine. Next I added the armrest. I measured the same length as the other one, and after it was dry I sanded both the front and back of it. Now we should be ready to add our rocking legs. I glued one side and then let it dry and then glued the other side. Okay, I did away with the horrible beads. For this, you're going to need a piece of the ribbon that has not been soaked in glue, which means you have to take extra care to make sure that it doesn't come undone while you're working on it. We want to bend the wire in kind of like the start of a U shape, and we want to make sure that the strings are pulled tight too. So when we go to cut it, we have all that ribbon we can glue down. And while holding it in its shape, cut the excess off. I didn't do it, but quite honestly, you should probably, after you cut it, do a layer of water glue and then glue it in place that way. You don't have the problem that I did and have the edges start to fray. Then go crazy with the braided rope. I started with the back piece beside of the bassinet and then I just went from there. Any edge that was open on the ribbon I covered except for the very front edge. We're going to be using the trim for that. Now that our trim's all over the place, we are going to make cushions for the chair. First, we're going to start with a cardboard base. We just have to make sure that it fits inside of our trim. This will be the same process that we used for the conversation chair and the bassinet base. When your cardboard's cut out and fits, trace both of them onto a piece of foam. I think this came from a chair that I took apart. It was destined for recycle anyways. Next, cut your foam pieces out. Then strip a piece of your fabric, just enough to cover over the edge. We're gonna make a sandwich with our fabric, then the foam, then the cardboard. I did my cardboard with the painted 
side down, so it was just the plain cardboard showing through. So if you looked at the bottom of the cushion, you wouldn't see this black and red thing. Mine was a bit too big on this piece here, but we're going to fold all of the straight sides over first. Take your time and try not to push down too hard because you'll collapse the foam and make your edges wonky. Trim the excess before folding in the corners. My back crest has rounded corners, so I grabbed the pointed part and folded it downwards. This kind of gave me a little bit of a pleat. For the seat cushion, I decided to try something different and started with folding the corners in first. Honestly, I really don't think it made that much of a difference. <laughs> You don't have to, but I went ahead and glued my cushions in place, and I held it with a binder clip until it dried. I was so glad when I put it together and the cushions fit. I was a little worried that the pleats would have made it a little too thick to fit, but it worked. Okay, for the next part, we are going to need our sturdy wire and some pliers. Put an eye hook at the end of it. This will be what we hang our mobile on. You'll need something sturdy and round. I used a bead tube, but a glue stick or something similar would work perfect. We want to arch in it, but we want to make sure that the arch is big enough that the mobile will hang directly over the bassinet. Speaking of the bassinet, grab it next because we need to measure how tall we need it to be so we have enough space for not only the bassinet but the mobile to hang down to. Next, poke a hole along the back of the bench. It needs to be big enough to allow for your wire to sit down in it. Yay, onto the mobile. This was honestly my favorite part of this whole bench thing. I put in the scavenger hunt that if you could find a moon charm to do so because it would be a lot easier than this. I took a piece of packing foam in my ring size thingy, drew out a moon, and then cut it out with a pair of tiny scissors. Once you've got it carved, set it aside, we're going to work on the stars. For the stars on the mobile, I used a party necklace that had stars on it. Although I really liked the shiny, blue didn't really match with the theme, so I sanded all of the paint off with the nail file and sandpaper. I only did three stars and the one moon because I only planned to use two strings to hold them together. Camera wouldn't focus for anything. Oh, there we are. Okay, as you can see, the paint is all gone, and I also had my husband melt a hole through each one of the stars so I can put a jump ring through, which is what we're going to do next. Open the jump ring up and put it through the hole on the stars, then use your pliers to close the jump ring again. For the moon, I used a pokey tool, poked a hole, and put the jump ring through it. Now you'll need some glue and paint in your choice of colors. I went with white for the moon and blue for the stars, but you're going to have to do some prep work with the moon. Before you paint, you're going to have to coat it in quite a few layers of glue because this is foam and it's quite porous and we're trying to make it have the impression that it isn't. Including the crook because I thought that the black was too harsh with all the other light colors. Once all the pieces were painted, I went over them with another layer of glue to make sure that the paint wouldn't come off. Then I glued the crook to the back of the chair. While that's drying, we can go ahead and work on the mobile itself. We will need two single strands of twine, our pieces, and four tiny wooden beads. First add a tiny bead and then the moon. 
Then take the end of the string and loop it back up through the bead. Cinch it down and then add a dab of glue and that'll hold it in place. Repeat the process at the other end with a star and the second string you would have a star on both ends. I used another string to tie the two strings together and then I added a dab of glue to make sure it stayed. I trimmed the excess string and hung it just to see what it looked like. It rocks so well, I'm so glad that it does. Okay, we have one more thing to do and that is to add the trim around the base of the chair. I went back and forth with myself about if I should put a blue strip behind the trim like I did for the bassinet. In the end, I decided to leave it plain and that brings us to the end of our tutorial. If you liked what you've seen, please like, share, and subscribe because it really helps me out a lot and I'll see you next time.